This is, this is, this is. Yo. All right, brand new episode. Tom Wisniewski is calling in in just any second, really. Um, MXPX weekend was amazing. No effects weekend. We're going to talk all about it. Uh, the very last retirement weekend for uh, no effects. Yeah, here he is. Yo, yo. Hey. Hey, welcome to it. You're on. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, I thought we'd recap. Let's uh, while it's fresh in our minds. We just got back from the very last weekend we'll ever see no effects live. Yes, yes. Uh, it was. I mean, the word. It's just like there's there's and these. It's absurd what happened this weekend and what we went and did and i wouldn't believe it if i wasn't there why do you say that just just the overwhelming nature of the whole thing like first of all you know no effects calling it calling it a career is wild like they're you know at the height of their powers and all that and they're like and we're good we're good we're good there that's that's crazy it's a it's a cool it's a it's a it's a power move you know like and it's it's cool like just the way that like every band should want to end like that like with just a huge send-off party for a couple years you know yeah absolutely um i kind of felt the same way like this monstrosity is is independent really you know it's not live nation it's not these big corporations it's it's a group of people making this happen punk rockers and it was amazing yeah and, and, yeah, and the amount of love that w- was there for everybody, like there was no, there was no hate really. Like I, I mean, everybody was treated really well. Um, even the fans were treated really well, and, and <laughs> it's just it was it was wild. So we should go into. I mean, maybe we should just do this chronologically. It'll be easier to section it off. Maybe yeah. that way we don't forget as much. I was just going to make one comment on the point of, uh, you know, it was just a bu- it was independent. There's a bunch of punks putting it together. I'd be shocked if anyone who had anything to do with organizing the whole event even owned a suit. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, the, the suit for that is like black T-shirts and vans, you know? Yeah. I own a suit jacket. I'll tell you that. I got a suit I jacket. I mean, yeah, sure. Go but on. we didn't organize it, so That's still true. tracks. That's true. That's yeah. true. All right. Um should we, should we just start with Thursday? We're like, all right, we're heading out. We just head out to, uh, we you yeah. Know, our crew flew out mostly from Seattle. Um, we got other guys flying out from other places, and then of course some local guys in Los Angeles that didn't have to fly, which was good too. But uh, we always meet up usually for like a a family dinner beforehand, where the band and crew gets together and we have food, and that was uh, no different. This was same deal. Yeah, it's it's always that's kind of one of my most favorite parts of the weekend is sitting down with the whole band and crew and having dinner and just talking and catching up, joking. I mean, Tony Godino usually shows up a little later and he comes in as a little bit of a hurricane and it's great. It's awesome. He's just such a personality and like, you know, just comes in on like on a 10 because he's like, I got here late. So let's turn it up, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So much fun. And, you know, this was a little different because normally we're doing headlining shows and really the only non-headlining shows we've done in years has been, as far as I can remember, has been these no effects shows. I think you're right, yeah. And um, it's been cool. It's been cool. So they've treated us so well. We played Portland. So after our two Bremerton shows, back-to-back in Bremerton over the summer, the the day after that was Portland. Awesome experience. Um, it's like it's a big festival, but you feel like you kind of know you know people. You know, like our stage manager for all of these shows has been uh, a guy that we've been working with on the Warp Tour for years and years and years as our stage manager there. So Greg Teal. Yeah, and I mean, I, I always I always preferred to be on the Teal stage when we were on Warp Tour. Nothing against Stewart or anyone, but no. just like Teal yeah. was our guy. You know, we were always on the Teal stage, always. Yeah. And, um, R.I.P. to Stewart, you know, much love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, um, yeah, that was, it, it was cool to like show up to Portland and be like, oh, yeah, this is, it's not Warp Tour at all. Like, it's totally different, but it's familiar faces, it's family, it's people that are happy to see you. It's, it's funny. You know, we, you know, Timmy Chunks was, uh, was helping out in, in LA, you know, this, this show, San Pedro. Timmy Chunks yep. is a guy we've known forever. 
He's a he, he used to work with Green Day forever, and then he was on Warp Tour doing stuff. But he was always with bigger bands, you know, always big bands, guitar tech, making it happen. So just having having uh, people like that working the stage, being there, being like, "Yep, I know you, I know you." It's just like a, it feels like home. It really did. It felt great. Yeah, it's and it's one of the things too. Like you know, Timmy was the first one we saw when we showed up Friday, and it was just like immediate like hugs and hangs like you know it's just like hey where are you guys man how you doing you know like it was it was awesome hugs and hangs yeah yeah i saw yeah. fletcher the well we'll get to that i was just gonna say i <laughs> saw him like well well like during the day and hung and said hi and we were talking and we took a picture and had no idea what was what was to be but let's yeah. let's get into friday let's get into friday so friday's the day we played first day so the event's three days was three days long friday saturday sunday um, we were kicking it off, not kicking off the event, but we were just playing the first day. And um, we played uh, right before Dropkick Murphys, who played right before No Effect. So we were towards the end of the day. Um, anything you want to start with, Tom? Uh, I mean, God, we got there and it was just, I mean, the Souls were there, which was awesome because I haven't seen them in a long time. Uh, just the Bouncing Souls are just such a great band. They're so fun and like, just like, like their their music's just kind of joyous and in a good fun way. It's great. So it was, it was really it was a pleasure to get to see them, talk to Pete a bit about guitars. We're we're big guitar nerds together. Right. Jeez, what else? What do you what do you mean, talk, what, like what what kind of guitar talk do you come up with with him? We were kind of on the tube amps versus Kemper's thing, and he was talking about how he had rental. Uh, backline, and he actually had a friend bring him an 800 because he knew like the rental ones always were kind of crappy. And he's like, "Yeah, I use two, and I, my friend brought me one that's great." And then we had to go through five amps to get to a good one that was like good for my backup one. So, yeah, it's it, it's kind of a little bit soul sucking when you make the leap to Kempers from tube amps, but the convenience and the uh, versatility and the just consistency is unmatched yeah it's kind of one of those things it's like uh okay i'll get on you know back in the day i'll get on twitter or i'll get on facebook it's like it's it's right. part of our culture now and i think in guitar world and in, in in the things we do as traveling musicians having to rent gear now and again having the kempers is so dynamite it's so crazy that we don't really think about it anymore like you used to be so stressed out about your guitar pedal and your pedal board and like one little cable out of all these cables can go wrong and you're just what and you, it's happened it's show, happened shows shows over yeah or shows delayed you know so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i mean we're gonna do the show with or without you tom but <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 It'll just not be as good, um, not even close. But um, yeah, that, that's the Kemper thing. Is is it's it's always going to be a debate. But when it comes to live live music and not recording, honestly, because we still sometimes we'll use a Kemper, you know, to get a certain sound. But for the most part, our core recording sounds are all real amps because we have them right yeah, here, course, so yeah. might as well use yeah. them. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to live, man, we're just setting up. For this show, um, we've had sound checks for most of the shows, um, but this show, we didn't have a sound check. We had a throw and go. Yeah, and that's the thing with the camper too. It makes throw and go so incredibly easy. You just plug a, a microphone cable on the back of it, and there you are. Yeah, it was uh, great. Shout out to Andy, by the way, Andy Alonzo, crew chief. As far as like our sound and how we sound out in front, and what you hear as an audience, he. He really made it happen because he also works uh, with No Effects. He's on the No Effects crew. They always seem to pick the pick up really good guys, you know. So, um, shout out to Andy. He really made things so smooth for us, so easy. Yeah, he plug and play, boom. Yeah, he he set it up to where we couldn't fail. It was great. Even when uh, our in ears wouldn't work in Denver, they didn't work, and in San Pedro, California, they did not work because there's only so many frequencies and no effects has a certain amount of frequencies the local company has a certain amount and then so all the other bands are just screwed you can't get frequencies on these channels and what that means is like each like when i have a my monitor system that goes into my ears when i'm listening to we all have different ones tom has a different one i have a different one and you add that up to all the bands that have 
in-ears or have wireless systems, including guitar stuff too, because that does interfere as well. It takes up a, a band on the width, a bandwidth. Um, mm -hmm. So nothing worked. So Andy hooked it up. You know, he, he got packs from the local, his company, actually, the company he works with. So, uh, man, it's just, again, it just goes back to feeling at home. That's all part of it. Having people on the ground already there in the NoFX camp that are have our best interests in mind. Like, that was huge. And, and we're yeah, all working we together anyway. But, you know, just, just so things don't get overlooked is what I mean. It's always nice to have your inside man. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so were you nervous then, at all for the show? I'm sure people want to know. No, I wasn't nervous or anything. Uh, I was kind of stoked because uh, it started out really gray and kind of like the marine layer was over the whole thing. It was kind of just like kind of cool and gray, but it burned off really early in the day and it became a beautiful day with that breeze coming off the water. It was it was an, it was an idyllic place to play, honestly. It was, it was sunny, but it was cool. It was, it was, it was nice. It was great. Our trailer, um, all the trailers were all lined up on the on the edge of the the dock and the dock it was like a cement dock or cement dock i don't know how to say that word anymore it's been ruined for me um hmm. <laughs> totally different story that we won't get into today but uh all the trailers were lined up there and, and ours was just you know right there and if you went behind it like i remember we almost fell off the <laughs> i almost fell off into the water um, oh, luckily, it's just water down that you're going to hit. You're not going to die. I wasn't going to die, drown. but it was going to be rough for a minute there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't that close, but it was just like, okay, my life just flashed before my eyes. Um, but that it was a cool setup, though, because the whole the whole venue was out on the end of a, a pier, right? Like, was it a pier? Yep. Yeah. Um, and we ended up walking a few times to get car service, but, you know, to and from the hotel. So like we kind of had some experience that was similar to what people might have if they were parking out there or just walking out to oh, get their own car, yeah. car service. But we, we exactly had the same thing with everyone's, you know, everyone's parked out there and they'd walk half mile back to parking lots on. It's just kind of how it was. Yeah. Nothing's perfect, but it was actually pretty good. Um, yep. So let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Um, we had a half hour set, very short set. I felt like it went by like that. Really oh, cool. it went by in a blink, yeah. But it was it was great because the crowd was super receptive right away. Uh, there wasn't like a slow build; like people are kind of like feeling it out and getting into it. It was it was just like people were on and they were ready to go, and it was great because we obviously we come ready to go, and you know, with a half hour set, you got to bring it right. So mm -hmm. it was it was really cool to see that, and like just the crowd was really fun. Plenty of room on the stage to run around. I love just like jumping around and sprinting around on stage. My favorite thing I always tell people and after show weekends, like, how was it? I'm like, it was great. I played guitar and I jumped off things. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was great, man. I mean, no complaints. Uh, by no means did we play absolutely perfect. I don't think we ever do, but it was really tight. It was really good. Overall, strong set. Like, nothing weird happened. Um and some of the things that did happen, I don't think anybody would have noticed. So I'm not even going to bring up those things. But but um, just as an overall set, all the points were hit right. I feel like um, if we had a little more time, we could have done a little more magic. But like it's like we we cooked up some magic, I think. And it was even better than – I felt way better than our half-hour set was in Vegas for uh, when we were Young Fest. Now that set was fine too, but like sound wise for me personally wasn't the best. Like I was struggling with a slap back sound coming back to me. That wasn't a thing at all for these shows. It hasn't really been a thing since Vegas, to be honest, because I, I changed my monitors after that. But um it, it's uh it felt really good to be up there. It was really live, like kinda I felt like the stage was really loud. Uh, a little bit more so than than a club show would be. Um, which is usually the opposite because a li uh, an outdoor event usually isn't as loud on the stage because the sound can just dissipate. Yeah, no, it was it was good. I mean, it was you know from from where I was sitting with the ears and all that. It was it felt real nice over there. Bass toss went off. It was huge, and we we were like barely. We were just maybe a centimeter from touching each bass when it passed. Really yeah, close. people always people always ask me about like how can you just stand there while they throw those bases right behind you? I'm like, you know what? 
they're not going to let them hit me. Like you're on my side, right? You're not going to like let it fall into me. Like, Oh, it was too close to Tom. So I just let it smack him in the head. I'm like, no, I'm like I, Mike's going to catch I, it. I mean, yeah, whatever. I'd run over and intercept it. Yeah. 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 Ayuk or something. Yeah. It, it was, uh, it was really good. It, that's always the part for me where I'm like, okay, once we get that, I don't have to worry about that. And then I can really just get into the crowd, like thinking about the crowd and, and the show and, and what everybody's doing. So, um, I had a great time. I really, I really wasn't too far into my head. You know, there's, I don't talk about this too much, but like when I'm on stage, there's different shows. Sometimes I'm just fully immersed in the show and it goes so quickly. And sometimes I can get a little bit in my head where I'm overthinking how it sounds, how the crowd is reacting to this or that, how my vocal is, am I singing? I'm, sometimes I'm, my vocal isn't as strong, so I have to like really try hard to hit the notes. None of that. This was just pure joy. I had a great time. It was fun. Um, I hadn't even, you know, I didn't even slept that night. Um, couldn't sleep. Just laid there. I'm sure I, you know, I rested plenty, so it, my voice was okay. But uh, I was running on on low fumes. But the adrenaline really pushed me through. I was stoked. Didn't get tired once during the set. Good. Yeah, but that was that was that, and like you know. I mean, it was, it, the show went great. It was awesome. Like looking around, seeing friends on the side of the stage. Tony came out and sang with us. That was great. Yeah. Um, I mean, like it was, it was, it flowed. And yeah, like half hour goes by in a blink. But everyone seemed really stoked. I mean, everyone talking to through everyone throughout the weekend. They were really stoked. They're like, you guys absolutely killed it. You blew it away. Like I hadn't seen you in years. Holy shit, you got it. You know. So like, mm -hmm. it, was, it was cool. It was cool to uh, to go do. That was that was a blast for sure. Tony was awesome, by the way. Tony brought his his daughter Rebel up, and uh, he sang "Stay Up All Night" with us, and he did great. And it was just a cool moment. Um, man, we love doing that, you know. So um, I'm I'm sure at some point we won't always do it, but but it was cool to continue that. Um, yep. A lot of people also came up to me and said, "Hey, I listened to the podcast, man. Thanks for doing it." So it was cool to hear a lot of just random people, not even people that I knew, because of course there are some fans that I recognize. I'm like, I've seen you at a lot of shows. But there was, it was all people that I had never seen before in my life. Like, n maybe I had seen them, but I, you know, it, they had passed my uh, my memory barrier. But it was an all around all around great show. I got to see my my friends Rob and Christy. Rob was our very first roadie before JJ even. He was the guy that we brought on tour on our first tour. Cooler Than Camp Tour, 1995, Blenderhead MXPX. That was our name for it, not theirs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Rob was our, our roadie because he was old enough to rent a car if needed, if you know our van broke down, and he could rent hotel rooms if needed. So <laughs> Things got you got to worry about when you're 18 on the road. Yeah. So we got to, got to hang with him a little bit after the set out there, and, and people just, it was a night, it was not a nightmare, it was great to talk to everybody, but it was just like, I couldn't go anywhere without, without, um, you know, taking pictures and, and shaking hands. So felt like a politician just trying to mm -hmm. win, some, win some votes out there. <laughs> it was good. All right, Saturday, let's move on Saturday. I know you, you don't have all day here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Saturday was good. I showed up, uh, kind of earlier in the day and immediately like right when I got there in is a less than Jake guys. So I just ended up kicking it with them for a while like i was there with them for a long time like thing until probably lag wagon played or something it was just there's just like super good old friends of ours and it was great just to sit and talk and you know like it seemed like as soon as one guy finished the story another guy was waiting on deck with another one it was it was it was really great yeah the stories never end man like i you know when right before they went on i was side stage and there's a barrier and it was just them and their crew back there and like Jared's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. And then I, so I was like, all right. So I just went through and I just like walked onto the stage in the back and just hugged everybody and we got a picture. And I actually, there's a picture of me with them on their like main slides, you know, all their slides that they do in their show post after the fact. So I was like, ah, oh, proud, proud friend. You know, that me being that yeah. guy barging in. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's just like, again, like I say, home, you know, feels like home. 
being being in a place like that with all these people. And we haven't even gotten to Sunday. Sunday is the ultimate home feeling. So um, Saturday was fun. It was called Fatter Day because it was all fat bands, bands that had been on. I guess technically we could have could have uh, played. We, we could have played Saturday if we needed to. Yeah, but yeah. We're, not, we're not really known as a fat band, so uh, we played Friday. But Fatter Day was cool. Lagwagon sounded great. Better oh, than yeah, even Lagwagon better than even normal. Like they they really had a sparkle about them, um, and it was good to see Big Bitch. It was good to see Jesse was Jesse. back. That was awesome. Yes, their their original bass player was there, and and then it's funny because uh, I I. Uh, I talked to Joe after their new their bass player now Joe from RKL, yeah, and uh, he's like complimenting me on my bass playing and singing and just like how good I am and I'm like wait what are you talking about <laughs> like what no you you're the man um, that guy's a definitely a musician's musician he he really is is well versed at that instrument um, okay uh, Saturday night Descendants. They they were on before um, before it was it was them and I mean there was a bunch of other bands. It, Less than Jake was right before that. Um, yeah. Sentence Yuri came back, so it was just Tom and I that stayed the whole weekend. But Yuri came Friday Saturday, um, and then ended up was doing something else on Sunday. Um, I'm not going to tell you his business. You know it's not important <laughs> right now. But uh, <laughs> but Yuri came and he just popped up because we were hanging with uh, Will Wheaton and John Ross Bowie. Um, and, and Tom didn't even know it was Will Wheaton. I had just said well, really briefly well, no. when we walked up, we were talking and, and I was like, hey, I love your work. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. And, like, and then and it came up that we well, were. So at, they, they walked over and they stood right in front of us. And the first thing they said was like, we didn't get asked to be put here. And we're like, it's fine. Like someone walked over and said, hey, hang out here, right? <laughs> like we didn't ask to be put here. We're like, we're, we're like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Like I'm taller than you. I can see your head. It's not a big deal, right? And then we're chit chatting with these two guys, right? So I was just some dudes, friends of the band or whatever. And all of a sudden, like, I'm talking to Will. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's Will Wheaton. That's Wesley Crusher. Holy shit. Like, and I was like, I was like, oh, dude, I just realized who you are. What's up? And he's like, oh, right on. And then we started talking. And then I think you said, like, oh, yeah, we're actually, we're a band. We're MXPX. And he was like, what? No way. And like, he freaked out. He was like, no, no fucking way. And he started, he introduced us to his friends, like, this is MXPX. And we're like, holy, oh, he knows us. We know him. Rad. Small world, right? Yeah, it's crazy. They they were so yeah. nice, and it was yeah. cool, cool to get to meet them. They they knew the Descendants, but they're huge fans of the Descendants, so they had just met them as well. Yeah. And so it's cool to see it's cool to see actors and artists that are very successful at what they've done in life or are still doing in life be punk rock fans, fans of punk bands that not only we love but our own band is pretty cool. So another. Uh, Incredible moment. Bonkers, as you say, Tom. All yeah. right. So Descendants, awesome. No Effects was great. But that night, but, that night. Yeah, Saturday night. After the Descendants show, there was a benefit show for punk rock and paintbrushes because the, all their display got destroyed in Denver, right? You know, when we were doing our show and then the whole thing got shut down and No Effects couldn't play in Denver, punk rock and paintbrushes display got really messed up. So this was an attempt to uh, make some money to help fund their thing. And the descendants mm -hmm. decided, all right, let's have a bunch of people come and sing. Let's get all our friends. So Tom and I were one of many of amazing, amazing artists that came up and sang and played songs with the descendants that night in a tiny little 300 cap club called St. Rock in Hermosa Beach, California, which is really their hometown, their original hometown area. All right, Tom, go ahead. I mean, it was, it was nuts. I mean, like, 16 year old me never would have believed it if i was like yeah you're gonna just go up and stage and play and bill stevenson's gonna be like looking at you and kind of like nodding at you like here comes a big fill and then like you know making faces afterwards and stuff and like looking over and like seeing carl smiling while i'm playing guitar like no i wouldn't wouldn't have ever ever believed that and there it was and like stefan handed me his guitar and was like take it bud and i'm like I'm like, I don't mean to usurp you off your throne here. And he's like, no, man, it's yours. I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. It was so much fun. I mean, you know what's funny? I was, I was actually nervous for that one. You were nervous? Oh, awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad that you were nervous. I was not nervous, which is weird because I was nervous leading up to it uh, days before, weeks before, nervous about how high that vocal was on Good, Good Things. The song we did was Good, Good Things. Yeah. And I was nervous because it was so high and... I had been sort of like 
making sure I wasn't talking too much all day. You know, I was a little wary of that because um, it was, you know, late at night. We're doing the show. I've been up all day doing things. So I hadn't slept much. So here we are. I wasn't that nervous. I was just focused. I was so focused on making sure I was doing that vocal right. And I know I didn't even do it completely, completely perfect, probably, but pretty dang good. You know, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we rocked it, man. We really had a great time. The crowd was awesome. So many, you know, Frank Turner was there. Matt Skiba was there. Um, you know, Greg Hetson was there. Adrian Young, Jay Weinberg, all, you know, Dezo. Probably the highlight for me, even though there's so many more famous people in there, Dezo from Black Flag was in there. He was upstairs in the dressing room. I was, yeah, I was... Yeah, I was chatting him. I was chatting with him for a while upstairs mm -hmm. and didn't even realize who he was until like halfway through. I'm like, oh, that's Dez. Holy crap. Yeah. So I was chatting with him. I knew who he was, but I was I was like, how I'm actually being a normal dude. Like I'm just talking, having a conversation. But in my mind, I'm realizing, oh, yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> so yeah. funny. And yeah. I'm sure people do that with us all the time, too. But just the fact that he's so. He's like punk rock royalty. He's legendary. He He's in one of my favorite bands ever, Black Flag. Yeah, it's like, okay, hands down, one of my favorite moments from the whole weekend. So that was awesome. Had a great time. Um, much love to everybody. Much love to the Descendants. The, I didn't get to really sit down and just chill with Carl Alvarez or Milo, but got to say hi to them briefly. Um, they, you know, next time, right? It's, yeah, it's just it was busy, busy, busy. And there was a lot of people um, and people were trying to talk to everybody, not just them. They were trying to talk to me. So um, it was cool. All right. Let's get to Saturday and I'll let you get out of here. Saturday. That was Saturday. There's a broken base. But before we get to that, there's so much more. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike. Hey, Mike. Yes. You said let's get to Saturday. We already did Saturday. <laughs> I meant Sunday. Sorry. I know. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude! I really, I really have to go right now, though. Like, do you? can we finish? Can we do Sunday later? Yep, we're gonna do Sunday later. To be continued. There we have it. Day three, part two. Uh, welcome back, Tom. What's up? What's up? So we talked about day one, MXPX show Friday, and then we talked about the descendants on Saturday. How we jumped up with Descendage at St. Rock in Hermosa Beach. That was legendary. Absolute legendary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a. Maybe like a full length video together for next week. Um, because we haven't actually released the full, full song. Good, good things. So rad. Um, but let's get into day three. Let's just we don't need to overly elongate this whole thing. Let's just talk about it. We'll be done. We can you can go about your day. I'll see you tonight for the <laughs> live stream. Yeah. All all of the above. Mm -hmm. So um I think I saw MXPX memes daily. Um, or is it MXPX daily memes? I'm not sure. Uh, memes daily. So I think I saw a mock-up of a podcast episode called Fletchered. And yeah. I'm like, might as well just call it Fletchered. <laughs> what, what, you just gotta get, you gotta get them on the pod and just be like, all right, we're talking through this thing. Oh, Fletcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, I, I text, I was texting with him yesterday and he asked, how much? How much are you, bro? And just like wild night, LOL, crazy. Thanks for being a good sport. You know, like all that. And yeah, so, so everything's good, people. Everything's great. Um, I uh, I just told him, you don't owe me anything. We're good. I'm just gonna figure out what I want, what kind of favor I want to ask him later. But <laughs> right. <laughs> so Fletcher, yeah. Let's get into let's get into the last day. It was uh, Sunday, October sixth. And we had been up super late because the Descendants thing was pretty late. And, um, but man, I, it, it was a nice day. We woke up. Saturday night was so cold. I don't know if I mentioned that on the last section, but Saturday night I was freezing. I had all of my layers on, sweatshirt, jacket. I didn't have a hat or anything, but yeah, that was really freezing. But we woke up the next day, reset, sunny day. Here we go. Last no effects show ever. What was your vibe? What was your, were you, were you set? There was a lot of crew guys that were crying. A lot of people we knew crying, grown men crying. Yeah. Yeah. What was your uh, vibe? I was, I was, my vibe was like, this is like a, 
a happy thing like you know they're retiring they're doing it their way and it's funny because they ended up having a song called our way brand new song for the last day but uh they're going out their way and i thought that was really cool and like like i said you know this is this is how bands should want to end things like you know hey we're gonna end it in a cool fun way with all our friends here it's like it was a giant retirement party you know a lot of bands usually wait for someone to die and be like well i guess we can't play anymore but this was this was a band just doing it right and uh so I thought it was a cool, like, joyous case. And I don't think anyone was crying out of sadness, but, like, tears of joy. Like, this is insane, like, what we've done and what we've been a part of and everything. So it was, to me, it was just a really cool, fun day. And, I mean, like, you know, the amount of the amount of guys from other bands were there, you know, paying homage, seeing them off, whatever. It was just, it was really cool to see, too. Like, everywhere you turn, there was another guy from a band we've known for years or another band in the scene that's just like it, you couldn't you couldn't walk five feet without running into someone you've known for decades yeah yeah it, w- it was a family reunion it was like yep it was like graduation you know all like a graduation party or whatever it is it was celebration upon celebration upon celebration and it, it was it was a little weird because it's like this has never happened before in our scene in this way and so it was kind of like, how are we supposed to act? Are we supposed to be sad? Are we supposed to be happy? Are we supposed to, you know, we're supposed to not care. So like, I I was kind of the same thing. I was I was happy. I was honored. I felt I felt like we're in a place that we have dedicated our whole lives to this punk rock music scene, and the fact that we were part of it, just as part of it as as anybody was um i guess it's easy to say it, it was a bucket list thing kind of like the descendants night but um it was more than just a bucket list thing because it was a chunk of life a chunk of life that we're like celebrating like i we grew up listening to no effects in high, we were in high school when we first saw them play um right. we had their t-shirts just like any other you know, like a Motley Crue t-shirt. We had a no effects t-shirt. So yeah, to me, it's like, it's a little more important than just your average show. It's, it's like a piece of all of our lives put out there to celebrate. That's, that's the kind of vibe. That's kind of how I, I approached it. And, And the fact that, man, we don't get to see a lot of these people very often. Um, and so we really just took the opportunity to just say hi to everybody we could. And yep. it was so much fun. Karina, who who sings for No Effects and also, you know, is originally from Dance Hall Crashers. It was so awesome to kind of reconnect with her over these last mm. few months, really, you know, getting to a few different shows. Um, and the photographers, Colin Smith, you know, like there's so many people we met on these trips that I think is going to be really great to 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 have relationships going forward and oh yeah I've, I've been telling everyone like hey you know like don't be shy to you know say hi and hit us up when we're coming around because you know i was talking to another one another one of the photographers and it was we were talking about how it kind of feels like it was the last day of camp but everyone's going home to their separate ways and all that but we'll see each other all eventually at some point absolutely and and we'll even see the no effects guys i mean they're not dead so they're, they're gonna be <clears throat> yeah. around they just won't be playing live. Um, let's get before we run out of time again. Let's let's go ahead and recap the last show. Um, we don't have to get into like little tiny details, but like let's just kind of go right. through the decline and what we our part in it was, why we were up on stage, and yeah, and then so we'll the, get into Fletcher. <laughs> yeah, the decline the decline thing was great because I had actually played with them when they were up in Tacoma, like you know, a year and a half ago, on their you know farewell tour. And uh, I'd just been hanging out that day, and Rugly comes up to me, like, halfway through, like, Pennywise's set. He's like, hey, man, do you want to play on The Decline? I'm like, I don't know the part. He's like, I'll show you. It's easy. So, okay, cool. He grabs me, and then, like, five minutes later, he comes over and goes, hey, Hefe and Mike want to talk to you. So we go in the in the trailer, and they got a guitar, and they're like, they strap a guitar on me, and they show me how to play it. And it was, it was easy, right? And I kind of was playing through it, and I started playing it. You know, okay, I got it. Great. Then I started screwing out. I was playing it, like, kind of, like, with some folk chords. And Hefe was kind of like, oh, oh, man, I don't know if you should do it that way. I said, don't worry, I won't folk it up. And and Fatty just cracked up and started giggling. I'm like, yeah, all right, you got it, cool. But uh, 
it was fun. So we'd already done it before with us, but then I got a call maybe a few weeks ahead of time. I said, Hey, uh, do you want to play on the decline? And I'm like, no way. Am I the one they're picking? Like I'm the only one. There's no way, but I'm like, of course I want to play on. Are you kidding? And they're like, cool. It's going to be you and like 40 other people. I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's awesome. That's going to be rad. And so I was like, who is it? They're like, we don't even know yet. We're getting all together right now. So then I got a, a call back like, you know, a couple days later from Kent. He's like, hey, just double checking. You're on this list to play on the last day. You're definitely going to be there, right? I'm like, man, I'm so in. I'm fucking stoked about this. So it was just up until that day, like no one really exactly knew how it was going to be either because I had asked Wrigley earlier in the uh, in like the weekend. I was like, hey, how's it going to work on Sunday night? He's like, I don't really know, dude. I'm going to get a bunch of combo amps and figure it out. So he just rented like 40 combo amps and you know, a bunch of guitar cables. He was like, dude, who has 40 guitar cables anywhere ever? <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I, I had to rent a bunch of guitar cables. <clears throat> so it was all set up. And then once like, you know, no effects started playing and everyone started showing up side stage, there was a bunch of guitar boats full of guitars and we threw ours in there with everyone else's and we're standing around and like, you know, see like Dave from some 41. I'm like, there. I'm like, dude, are you playing? He's like, yeah, I'm playing. Cool. All right see steve who used to be in no effects and dude i'm like do you bring guitar he's like hell yeah i'm like cool that's perfect you, you were in the band this is awesome you know just like all these people around jay bentley shows up with you know with a bass i'm like oh you're obviously playing and like so just it started all kind of coming together and noticing who was there like you know three of the guys from rise against all showed up with guitars too and i'm just like, okay we're all playing here and we're all sitting and chatting and like once the decline started uh and it's like an 18 minute song but I mean, once the decline started, like minute one, beat one, everyone started grabbing their guitars. Like there was kind of like all of a sudden the energy side stage kind of shot up and it was already up because everyone was excited. It was like the last show and like this was it for no effects. Right. But like as soon as that song started, the energy just shot up on side stage and everyone started getting really excited. Everyone's strapping on guitars, tuning, showing each other the song again, just like last looks like, hey, OK, it's just E, C, D, G, G flat. OK, cool. We got it, you know. Um, just going over it, and uh, it was it was just really hectic. Everyone standing there with their guitars all tight to their bodies, they're trying not to break their favorite guitar or whatever. You know, foreshadowing there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, then you know, a little bit before the spot, Wrigley just says, "Go, go, go!" And he starts shuffling people, and he's like pushing people. He's like, "Go, get out there!" And like I had been joking with everyone because straight across the stage from us was a PV amp sitting right out in front. I was like, "Don't nobody touch my PV." That's mine. I'm joking, because they're like kind of, they're kind of like, eh, they're like beginner amps. But I went, I went right for it. I grabbed it, and I just turned everything up on it, and you know, started feeding back. So I turned on my guitar. I'm like, I don't want to script the song or like on a quiet part right now. But yeah, I look up once I'm plugged in, and literally, like, I hadn't seen John Feldman all night, but I look up and he's right next to me. He's smiling and grinning at me. I'm like, dude, what's up? He's like, oh my god, you know, like just like people were coming out of the woodwork with guitars strapped on them, and everyone's plugging in all these combo amps and. As soon as the song started, it was just kind of chaos. Like everyone was playing, you barely hear the drums over all the uh, all the combo amps just going off, and everyone just strumming along. And I just decided to have fun with it. Like I was over with like uh, Greg Hetson for a while, and we were just smiling and playing together. And then like I looked over, and uh, Melvin's right there looking at me, and like he always does this kind of like like bunny hop jump thing all the time. He's just like screwing around on stage, so I started doing that back and forth with him, and like. Yeah, it was just it was just it was a really good time. I'm looking out at the crowd and everyone's having a great time. And I was more just focused on the crowd on the stage because it was just it was just a wild scene of all these different dudes. Like I was sitting there, Greg Teal was borrowing my guitar and I'm like I'm smacking him and then I noticed like I almost hit Dexter from Offspring like in the face when I was doing it. Um <laughs> you know, like mid mid the thing, like we were all just looking around and I looked up and I saw Smelly looking around and so I just waved at him and he smiled and waved back like it was just like it was just it was just a wild scene, you know. And then the, the song finally ends. Uh, yeah, everyone's kind of hanging out and feeding back and all that, and it goes to Fletcher time. <laughs> yeah, man, it was. I, I kind of had the same experience, just just looking around, playing with everybody, jamming, going over to somewhere else, jamming. I was like next to Fletcher so many times, just like poking the bear in a way like I because because at the beginning you know Andy you know days ago Andy's like just stay away from Fletcher's side but Fletcher oh, yeah. was all over the place so you couldn't really stay the, on one that side. was the first thing that was the first thing Andy told me he's like just stay away from Fletcher yeah so how mm -hmm. how I you know you were you were in on the decline before I was because you yeah. were like yeah I'm in you know they called me they told me to bring my guitar and 
And I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. And, and I was texting with Fatty the week ahead. It was like, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday or something like that ahead of the weekend. Just about how crazy it was. Like, this is actually happening. You guys did it, you know, da, da, da. and he's like, oh, I know, we did it. And he's like, hey, did I ask you to play bass already? I probably did, but make sure you play bass. You got a bass? And he was kind of joking. I'm like, can I use yours? He's like, you got two bases, right? So that's how I got invited to do Decline. But uh, going up there, I saw Jay Bentley because he had had that, he had that hollow body. And from afar, I thought that hollow body bass was a, an acoustic guitar. <laughs> so I thought he had just grabbed something or whatever. And, and it was before we had start. it was before the, we were, we were out on stage. It was on the side of the stage. And I was like, hey, you, do you need a bass? And he's like, because I was going to give him my bass, my other bass. I had two basses with me. And he's like, oh, no, this is a bass. Check it out. And I'm like, oh, wow, that is a bass. All right, cool. You're good then. <laughs> and then. And then fast forward to the end of the decline when Fletcher starts. See, Fletcher is just, he, he loves to party. He loves to destroy things. I mean, I don't blame him for it because it's really fun to smash things as evidenced by that video we put out last year or earlier this year. Um, anyway, Jay's playing. Fletcher grabs his bass, that hollow body bass that I thought was an acoustic guitar and just starts smashing it. And I, and I go over to Jay and I'm, le I'm yelling, oh my God, I'm glad that's not my bass. <laughs> 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 because I almost gave him my, my other bass. So that one, I was thinking, okay, he almost smashed the bass I lent, would have lent Jay. Little did I know my bass, my orange creamsicle was going to be smashed into thousands of pieces but um sacrifice it was sacrifice to the punk rock gods i feel like it was a proper sacrifice and it's going to bring us many many years of abundance and the best punk rock you can imagine yeah i mean like i was i was right there when fletcher was wrestling away from you and i just i was looking on like oh my god this is actually happening and like i was like this is going to be rad and like for anyone who's wondering like ours was definitely not purine some people were joking that like jay brought like a like a throwaway bass or whatever like that, but I don't think his was prearranged either. Like I don't think I know I know Joe from Rise Against his wasn't prearranged, but uh, I saw Fletcher wrestling away from you, and you were kind of like fighting back a little bit. Then I saw Fletcher just kind of like get calm for a second, looking. You go, "It's a sacrifice." That's what Fletcher says to you, and that's when you kind of let go. That's when and I was I just go. like, "Here," I was like, "Here we go, here it goes." And then I watched him just destroy your bass, and then right when he was done with that, and he was handing it back to you. I looked around and I was kind of right by him and I took my guitar and I handed it to Andy. I'm like, hide this. So I'm like, I'm not getting mine smashed. Yeah. yeah. And talking, talking about having loaner, like loaning your guitar out, my backup guitar, I had loaned to Greg Teal. I saw him afterwards. I'm like, dude, where's my guitar? He's like, I, I hit it as soon as I saw Fletcher start smashing stuff. I'm like, good, good job, man. I did the same thing. Well done. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody was so, I mean, I, I don't care if anybody else is mad at Fletcher. I'm personally not mad. We're not mad. I mean, no. it's uh, it's friends. And if I really, really, really cared about that bass in particular, like I definitely wouldn't, I would have ran away. Like, like if that was like a bass that, uh, you know, was given to me by, by Joe Strummer or something like that. Yeah. I probably would have run right. away with that thing, but yeah, like you said, it's a sacrifice. And so I know that in order to really have everything we want in life, there are sacrifices to be made. So we did it. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it, it, was, it was fun. Here it is. Uh, you can't see this, Tom, because you're on the phone, but I'm showing it on the video. The smashed bass. It's, um, it's still got strings on it, although it's not in tune. But I bet you if I tune this baby up, it would play. And yeah, it, it won't plug in because there's no knobs left and the wiring's <laughs> gone, but it actually has four strings and I think we'll play pretty wide. So Fletcher didn't do as good a job to string as he thought. No, he, he left a little <laughs> bit, a little bit there. Left but, it playable. Uh, but um, I've already put in a new order to Ernie Ball. So they're sending me another one and um, all is well that ends well. Yeah, no, it was just it was just a crazy end of it. Then like, you know, that whole mess of people just standing around on the stage, everyone's just like hugging it out and all that and like you know Yeah. I felt saw I saw Melvin give him a big hug, you know, Hefe. I'm like, dude, you did it. This is crazy. And he was 
he was pretty emotional. You could tell he was just kind of like in a daze, like, oh, yeah, this is nuts. Like, it's actually done. Yeah. I mean, I could only imagine because it, it was a whirlwind for, for me personally, and it's not my band, you know? So yeah, um, there were so many hugs, so many just goodbye, love you, mans. Um, even at the end, at the way later, after hanging out with everybody, after the show was over, I don't know, it was past midnight easily, like two, one, two. Um, even then, I felt like I was leaving, and I, sh like, did I say goodbye to everybody? Did I, did I, right? you know, should I just leave now? You know, so I had that feeling of, like, I don't want this to end. I think that's partly what it was, is, like, I don't want this night to end. This was, this weekend was magic. This, this, this whole experience was awesome. And, um, now it's time to, to, to build our own, you know, to continue building. Obviously we've been building, but now it's time to build our own empire with MXPX. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it was, it was like so just, just a crazy, crazy way to end just a bonkers weekend. It was just, it was nuts. Like again, I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't there. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'll let you go. I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. I'll see you tonight. Okay. Um, yeah. This week, this week will be um, as as you'll as everybody's listening, not as as it's live because this isn't a live podcast. But um, this week, coming up Friday, we're releasing a brand new MXPX song, "Set a Fire." So please yeah. do us a favor, go check out the video, go add it to your music libraries, tag us online, tag MXPX, let us know what you think. Uh, the new era has begun. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Anything else? No, not for the podcast, but I have an idea for off podcast. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. All right. Thanks to Tom Wisniewski for being on. It's been a minute. I finally uh, had a good reason to bring him on. Um, MXPX, we got shows coming up. Chicago, December 13th and 14th. That's two nights back to back. We're doing two different sets. It's at Metro. MXPX in the Ataris. Tickets on sale right now. Go get them. They're already moving. So don't wait. It's going to be packed. And then Texas, Texas uh, in the new year, January 3rd in Houston at the House of Blues, and then January 4th in Dallas at House of Blues. Come on out. See us in Texas. I want to see my whole Texas family, all the people, all my homies. Come out and see us. What's up? Uh, MXPeaks.com for those tickets. Man, it, it's, it was so much fun. So much fun over the weekend. Appreciate everybody that said hi. I got to say hi and take pictures with a ton of people. Make sure you tag me, tag MXPX when you when you put those pictures up. Much appreciated. Um, I feel like there's more to say, but maybe there's not. Maybe we'll just, we'll end it here and I'll talk to you next week. Got some guests coming up. Um, and if I talked about doing a Halloween episode at some point, We'll try to get that done if there's time. If not, we're moving on to Thanksgiving and Christmas. You never know. It's just time's flying. It's already, like I said, last week was Smacktober. Here we are, Fletchered. Um, life is good. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for anybody that, and everybody that came up to me and said they love listening to the podcast over the weekend. It always really does my soul a good service to, to hear that personally from people face-to-face. Just because I'm, I'm out here talking to a camera most of the time or I'm talking to a guest. I don't know who's listening. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. So thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting MXPX and everything we do. Thanks for supporting punk rock. MXPX.com. Uh, make sure you guys check out the live streams we're doing. Um, we're kind of doing a bunch randomly. It's not a set schedule. But um, yeah, this week we're going to get on. I don't, we're going to get on and do something, but it's not going to be... It's not going to be the full live show because Yuri is busy. Tom's going out of town. There's a lot going on. So um, Tom and I are going to do something, and we're going to talk about Set of Fire. New song Set of Fire coming out this week. If, uh, the video's coming out this week, um, Thursday night, Friday, somewhere in there. Stay tuned for that, all right? Before we wrap this thing up, shout out to my boy, Bob McKnight, producer Bob. Much love. Thanks for doing what you do. And thanks to all the listeners. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing the podcast, sharing it with a friend, a coworker, any, anybody you might think would be into it. Um, I appreciate you. All right. New things coming. Exciting times coming up. Um, Christmas is coming. Thanksgiving's coming. Um, if you love the other band I play in, Goldfinger, we're doing a show 
Skanksgiving in New Jersey. That's, I want to say it's after Thanksgiving, the weekend after Thanksgiving. So tickets on sale for that as well. Um, don't sleep on any of this. It's going to be, an, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be wild to travel to all these places in the wintertime, but Hey, it's not anything I've never done before. We do it all the time. Um, but it never gets easier. I'll tell you that. All right. <laughs> That's it. Peace.